Why would you have a lathe that only has that much room between centers? I think I know. You can just slide this all the way to the end, lock your lever, it's set, slide your tail stock all the way down to the other end, and there you have it, a meter of distance between centers, ready to go. Hi, I'm Andrew Protochnik, looking at one of the new blades that have come into the Sherwood range, and uh, let's have a look at what sets this one apart from the ones that we've seen so far. So why would you go for a lathe like this one? Well, here's one of the great features. If you loosen this lever, you can not only slide the, the headstock anywhere along the bed that you wish, but you can also loosen this lever and rotate it to 45 degrees or further still to 90 degrees. So you can turn rather large pieces of wood outboard, well, on the lathe itself, or you can turn pieces of wood up to a metre in length. So if you're going to turn large pieces of wood, you need a fair bit of torque. Now this motor here looks like it doesn't have too much meat in it, but you'll be surprised. It's a servo motor rather than an induction motor. This has the capacity of about two horsepowers and it has a heap of torque. Not only is it powerful, but when you wind up the speed, it's quiet and smooth. Sounds nice. And you can turn the speed right down and you've got a digital readout here. I'm running that at about 180 revs and it's just moving along nicely. If I try and stop the lathe, I'll burn the skin on my hands. I've tried it, trust me. Let's have a look at the features of this lathe. First of all, a nice impressive 350 mil tool rest nice and solid cast iron and it's got a one inch tool post so there's not going to be any flex when you're working cast iron saddle i don't know why but some people call them banjos nice long handle on the locking lever same on this locking lever and it's spring loaded so it'll never get caught and you also have two other options of where you fit that in headstock we've already spoken about the motor but it's cast iron, nice and solid construction. And when everything locks into place, nothing moves. It's all nice and solid. Number two Morse taper and an M30 thread. So you've got everything working at that end of the lathe. Cast iron bed, nice solid tailstock, plenty of travel on the quill, and you've got this heavy duty live center. And you've also got an index on the quill so you can tell how far you've advanced the centre. Good for when you're drilling holes and uh, if you need accuracy. Again, nice solid locking lever, same here. Solid, once it's lock, it locked into place, nothing moves. And then, if you want to look further, these really solid legs. And I've been saying solid a lot. I need to find another word that means solid, but in the meantime, it'll go. So, if you want to, you can mount this lathe on a bench, but with these legs, you get plenty of support and it doesn't move. You've got weight to help uh, keep it steady. Set up and almost ready to go. This nice big faceplate is the standard one that comes with the lathe. All that I do is fit it onto the spindle, wind it on nice and firmly. You can see this is nowhere near the capacity of the, the lathe's ability. So all that I need to do is push this outrigger into place, tighten two bolts, And I'm ready to start turning. Because you can turn the head of this, uh, the headstock around on this lathe, that means that you don't need an enormous amount of clearance between centres. In fact, this lathe doesn't have that much clearance between centres because, or over the head, or bed, but once you swing it around, you can stand facing straight into your piece of wood. You don't have to turn around and over the bed and all that sort of stuff. You can get in close 
and it's a much safer option. And with these two large outriggers, you've got plenty of support and there won't be any flex or movement. Let's give it a shot and see how it goes. Now you'll notice this bit of wood is slightly out of center and it's just off the bandsaw, so it's not evenly distributed. So let's see how the lathe goes. Safety glasses and let's start up the motor. Now I'm just increasing the speed gradually and you can see we're up to 230 revs, 290, 320. I think that'll be okay, so let's get started. dropping torque and I can take a fairly decent cut. For more information click on the links below. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, all that social stuff. I'm Andrew Potochnik and I'll see you next time and we'll have another lay for you to look at.